Why, hello there! Welcome back to my channel, and if you're new here, hi, my name's Janelle, and I upload new videos every week. In case you guys didn't know, I am a professional makeup artist. I'm also a content creator, so I wanted to give you guys a look that would photograph nice, but also look good in person and, like, not be too cakey, be a very wearable glam, perfect for, like, the spring and summertime. Fun fact, at the beginning of this video, my skin breakouts everywhere, and now they're all completely covered, but my skin isn't cakey, so I'm gonna show you guys how you can cover breakouts and all of that without having to use like a full coverage foundation without having to have like matte heavy skin let's get into the video all right so first things first i'm gonna prime using my koki essential hydration primer i'm really enjoying this lately because my skin has been feeling a little bit tighter lately which is so strange because the weather has actually gotten like so much more warm now i'm gonna go in with my elf poreless putty primer I have re-fallen in love with this. It's so flipping good. It just smooths out those pores. I've been breaking out like crazy here between that time of month. And also my diet over the weekend was crazy. Again, cause it was that time of the month. <laughs> I really like this cause it just kind of like blurs all those imperfections so that whatever skin product you put on top is just gonna lay super smooth. Even though I'm breaking out like crazy, I don't like to glop on a super full coverage foundation because I find it just enhances all of that texture even more. It just looks worse. So what I like to do is go in with a sheer hydrating tint to kind of start that first layer of coverage and then I'll add concealer, foundation, and all that as I need it. So I'm taking my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Filter. This is in Tan 5. She is orange, but it works because my body is pretty tan and this is sheer. You're just gonna do a thin layer all over. I take my Blend My Face Microfiber Spray Sponge and push that into the skin. Now this sponge, I love it because it's kind of like a blend between a beauty blender and a brush in one. You're gonna get the coverage that you would get with a synthetic dense brush, but you're gonna get that melted into the skin finish just like you would with a beauty sponge. Since it's damp, it's gonna mesh that product into the skin and give you that beautiful like satin glowy finish. I haven't done my full on YouTube setup in so long. It's so nice because I feel like I can just really go in depth with my techniques and products that I like to use. On TikTok, I have to like talk in times five speed to get all the information out in a short period of time. But on here, I can really take advantage and like give you guys all the tips and tricks so that your makeup can look flawless. Okay, boom. So that gave a really light veil of coverage, but you can obviously still see all those breakouts peeking through. That's okay, because we're gonna go over just those areas with a foundation. And that's why I like doing it like this, because then my skin doesn't feel cakey all over. So I'm gonna take my Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. Any sort of lightweight foundation will work. I like this one because it's a satin finish, so it's not gonna be too drying. So you know when you go in with a matte foundation or concealer and it will cover it, but then if your blemishes are scabbing, it'll settle in those dry patches and look worse. There's nothing that drives me more crazy. So that's why I like to go in with a more satin silky foundation. So that way I can get that cover but it's not going to enhance the crustiness of these breakouts. Any hydrating foundation will work. I also love the L'Oreal True Match Nude or the regular L'Oreal True Match. I'm just dabbing it on these areas. I'm gonna let it sit for a second. Did another little dab of foundation on the back of my hand and I'm gonna pick it up my sponge like this. Make sure it's evenly coated. That way when I go to blend this out, it's not picking it up and leaving a patchy finish. And now I'm lightly just tapping over everything. You have that coverage, but it's not cakey. You can still see it peeking through. But that's okay, we are humans here. We don't need it to look plastered on. Now taking an OG product that I rediscovered from actually watching some of my old YouTube videos. I do that a lot, I'll influence myself. The Elf Hydrating Camo Concealer. This was my jam in 2020. And it was for good reason, because I started using it again and I'm like, why did I ever stop? I use the shade Deep Caramel. Just doing a little triangle like that at the tip of my nose. And then I do a little line at the top of this ear kind of drag it down. This is a full coverage concealer, so you don't need to do too much. Sigma, what brush is this? Sigma FO5 brush. Blend it out at the jawline first because there is nothing worse than when you forget to blend out your jawline. Or like, is that a beard? Is it contour? We don't know. Blend out the forehead and the cheekbones. Taking a slightly fluffy shader brush, I'm gonna use that to drag this nose contour up. The reason I don't do two bulky lines on the sides of the nose is because then I'll end up having too much product on the nose. And then when I blend it out, it'll look muddy. But if I just do a little bit at the tip and drag it up, I find it gives me the perfect amount of product for a defined nose contour that's not too muddy. 
For concealer, I'm gonna mix my Dior Backstage Concealer and my Pat McGrath Sublime Concealer. I mainly use the Dior Backstage and I just do a dot of the Pat McGrath to give that extra flawless coverage underneath of the eye. By mixing it together, I'm able to get that flawless coverage, but it doesn't look cakey. Another great concealer option that I have rediscovered and have been loving, the NYX Bear With Me Concealer. This performs just like a high-end concealer. The only reason I'm not using this today is because when I was on vacation, this was the combo that I use and it looked so good in person and in pictures. So I wanted to share this with you guys, but NYX Bear With Me if you're on a budget, so beautiful. We're backstage. We're gonna do little half moons underneath of the eye like this. We're gonna put that down the center of the nose. Using the very tip of the brush and very light pressure. We don't need too much product here. On the chin, some extra on those blemishes because they need all the love that they can get. And then we're gonna take a, just a dot of the Pat McGrath. This is in the shade L7. And I only put it in this inner corner. And then I add some extra on the back of my hand so I can pick it up with my beauty sponge before blending it out. And again, this just avoids the sponge from picking up the concealer when you blend it out. By having concealer on there, it like doesn't make the concealer look blotchy. Whatever's left, I put on my eyelids to kind of prime them. And then you see how that just like turned all this really white. So I pick up that brush that we used to blend out the contour. I don't pick up any extra product, but I use that to kind of like add some more of that warmth. I'm gonna go back in with the butt of the sponge to blend that out. Now just pushing in the concealer around here. I do like tapping motions under the eyes. I don't swipe. Tapping motions will allow you to keep that coverage. It'll avoid spreading the concealer too far out. Charlotte Tilbury Dream Pop Blush. It looks scary, it looks intense, but I promise you, it comes together. If you have a medium olive complexion like I do, or if your skin is even richer and deeper in complexion, this is going to look incredible on you. It just makes it look like you've been in the sun, like you have that kind of slightly sunburnt finish. If done right and if used sparingly, it's stunning. So I'm gonna apply a tiny dot to the high points of my cheekbones like that. Then I'll do a tiny dot in the center of my nose. Then I always add some extra to the back of my hand, working the product on my hand in a synthetic brush. Again, to avoid patchiness, we're gonna start blending it. I work this into like the sides of the nose to help give it that sun-kissed flush. And then work it across and then do the same thing on this side. I've been loving this Makeup Forever powder. So we're gonna use this and I like to spray my face, set my face with the powder while my skin is 70% damp. I'm trying to think, what is there to update you guys on? I got Invisalign. Um, I did not want to get braces because I've mentioned this before, but I'm the type of person where when too many people tell me to do something, I won't do it. I've gotten hateful comments on here talking about how unprofessional my crooked teeth are and how I need to fix my teeth and all this stuff. So when people just are nasty, it just makes me be like, no, you can still feel beautiful and be confident even if your smile is not perfect. At the end of the day, do what makes you happy. But at the same time, I feel like you don't have to be perfect to love yourself and to have confidence. And so I wanted to show that you could still feel beautiful even with imperfections. However, this imperfection was causing other issues. So my dentist straight up told me like, you need to get your teeth fixed because it was just causing other dental issues. It's time to invest. And I will say I am very excited about it. I'm excited to be able to just smile boldly and confidently. I have my Invisalign in for 44 weeks. So a little under a year. The first couple weeks were brutal, but it's definitely gotten better as the weeks have gotten on. I've gotten more used to talking with them. I also found out when I was getting my Invisalign put in that I have a tongue tie and my speech has always been something that has driven me crazy, especially after filming. And like, I would notice that I would just get, like, it would be hard for me to pronounce and articulate a lot. It also doesn't help that my brain works faster than my mouth. So like I always stumble over my words, but I always felt like there was something wrong in there. And I did, thought it was like my overbite and had to do with my teeth, which I'm sure that probably played a role in it too but I really think my tongue tie like kind of affected it. So it's been really difficult because I couldn't even talk before I had these in. And now with these in, I'm like, I feel like a two year old that's trying to like articulate stuff and it can be really hard to get all the words out. But beside that, what's getting me through this is knowing that the results will outweigh all of this. So now let's go into blush. I think I'm gonna do my Sephora So Shy blush. This is one of my all time favorite blushes. Look how pretty it is. Oh wait, I wanted a bronze first. All right, so I'm gonna bronze with my Hourglass Ambient Bronzer. This has been a tried and true for like, I think two years now. I really, really enjoy this bronzer. 
Then going in with my Makeup by Mario bronzer. Why did I just sing that? Use this to set the nose contour. Spray that face again with some setting spray because we're gonna go in with the under eye brightening powder. Taking my Givenchy Prism Powder. This stuff is so good. I wish it wasn't as good as it is. So if you're interested in trying it, the Sephora sale is coming up April 15th. I would recommend getting it then. Get it while it's on sale because the only reason I justified this purchase is because I'm like, oh, like I get paid to do this and talk about makeup and it's technically a tax write-off. $60 for a powder? It's so, so good. See, like, look at that. Velvety smooth finish. Once you're like over the age, I would say like 25, you've got to start getting a little bit more particular with the powders that you use because I noticed that everything starts to settle in those little crevices. I still love Cody Airspun. Now, if I went in with Cody Airspun, it would be settling in every crevice pore. So what I found is that I just like more like finely milled powders. I love the hourglass powder too. A good drugstore option is the Koki powder. That one's great. I do want to explore some more drugstore powders because I want to have better recommendations than like just these freaking $60 powders. Like we're in a recession. No, thank you. I'm gonna use my blush brush to wipe this away. The reason I use the blush brush is cause it helps enhance that little pinky undertone that this powder has. And then for underneath, I like to wipe it away with my bronzer brush for underneath. Look how good that skin is looking. And it looks even better in person cause it's like not overly cakey or heavy. Now we're gonna lock everything in with my MAC Fix Plus. I know I spray my face a lot, but it makes all of the difference. I should probably lower my mic. I think I want a little bit more of a pinky tone on the blush, so I'm gonna add some of my MAC Mineralized Blush in the shade Dainty. This has been one of my favorite blushes since 2018, because I remember using this on my wedding day. Taking my Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Beauty Wand. You can use any sort of liquid or cream highlighter. I just love layering cream highlighters on top of powdered skin. You have to do it correctly because if you just throw it on there, it could break apart the makeup. So what I do is I work it on the side of the cream blush brush that I use. Very lightly start tapping it on the high points of the cheek and it just helps marry everything together. And I think that this looks so much better than just like a powder highlight that's just like streaked across the cheek. This really just melts into the skin. For brows, I hate doing brows. Should I do brow? <laughs> but I feel like I need to do my brows for my eyeshadow. Let me set my eyelids first with that loose powder and then we'll do brows. We got this though. Okay, so I'm gonna start by brushing them up and I'm gonna lightly fill in the tails. Wait, I think I need to pluck some hairs. My brows are always so different. Look how much more arch this one is. Setting my brow hairs with my Anastasia Brow Powder in Dark Brown. So typically, if I'm not filming, I will only use the brow powder and not the pencil. But it definitely looks better on camera when you do both. Which I wanted to start disclosing that because I recently did a TikTok video and then I ended up sharing it here on YouTube. It was a very short video because it was meant for TikTok. But I did makeup that looks good on camera versus makeup that looks good in real life. Things and stuff that you might see me do or other creators do, you may not realize that you don't even necessarily need to do that step because we're doing it because there are all these lights around us that are washing everything out. The camera can wash things out, but it can also like pick up stupid little details. We'll do in a makeup tutorial that like you wouldn't necessarily have to do in real life. But in order for it to look good on camera and for you guys to not think I'm a terrible makeup artist, you gotta do those steps. Um, but let me know if you guys would wanna see like a more in-depth video on that. Now I'm gonna take that Makeup by Mario bronzer that we used. I'm gonna start dusting this back and forth in my crease. I like 99% of the time, if I'm wearing eyeshadow, it's really just bronzer. And then maybe like I'll add a sparkly lid shade or like whatever highlighter I have on my cheek, I'll add to my eyes. Now taking a slightly warmer tone in the Makeup by Mario palette, use this straight edge. to bake underneath of my eyebrows just because this helps further disguise my brow hairs and then I buff it out with that fluffy brush. Now taking the Sephora eyeshadow in the shade Hollywood Calling. I got this because it looks so close to one of my favorite shimmers in the Tati Beauty palette. Fortunately though Tati Beauty is no longer and that was like my favorite go-to eyeshadow. It's not exact but it's very close to it so I'm gonna pick that up with this fluffy brush. Coating both sides of that brush, I'm gonna lightly mist it with some setting spray. Work this on the lid. It's like the most stunning bronzy color. If you have a tan and you wear this eyeshadow, 
chef's kiss. It's gonna look stunning. You're on vacation. When I was in Mexico, this was like my go-to evening eyeshadow. Ugh, that was like such a good vacation. My friend and I, we initially intended to go to Tulum. We had everything booked, but then stuff going on in the news with like kidnappings and with how dangerous Mexico was. So we figured it would be more safe to stay in Cancun because we were flying into Cancun and the drive from the Cancun airport to Tulum is two hours. And we were like, just didn't feel comfortable. Plus my husband's cousin that had recently stayed in Tulum got his hotel room broken into and he was staying at like an all-inclusive resort there in Tulum. So we were like, okay, we need to switch this trip around. So we switched it around in like four days before we were leaving. And then we ended up staying at this beautiful resort in Cancun. It was funny though, because the resort, we didn't realize, but it was marketed as a couple's resort. And this was like a girl's trip for her and I. So we were like the only like young girls there that were not coupled up. And the whole time I'm there, I'm just like, dang, I wanna come back with Alex. Like, <laughs> this is so nice. But get this, four days after we came back home, there was four people found dead at the beach that the resort backed up to. So it wasn't at my exact resort that I stayed at, but it was not far from that and it was in Cancun. So with that being said, I loved my vacation, but I would just be careful, honestly. Traveling through there, I will, don't recommend it, especially if you're a girl. Like I wouldn't recommend and doing a girl's trip for sure. I definitely was protecting us. I literally traveled with my like anointing oil and I like prayed over my room, prayed over myself. Like I, I had such bad anxiety going, just knowing how crazy everything was. And the resort that we stayed at felt very safe, but still like you never know. And yeah, I just, the world is so crazy these days that I feel like doing anything as just young women, women in general, like you just have to be so careful and it's so annoying, but it's just the reality. Now I'm gonna take the shade Sunstone in my Sigma Glow Kissed Highlight Palette. I'm gonna use it to highlight my inner corner. I'm using like a fluffier brush to do that. But yeah, I'm just glad that we made it back safe. The vacation was so nice and so worth it, but it definitely shook me up a little bit when I saw that on the news shortly after I was like, Picking up that same shimmer shadow, I line my lower lash line with it. Taking my Lancome Edol Brown Eye Pen. I'm gonna do a little half wing with this. Any brown liquid liner will work. Also extending the inner corner. Get your lashes to look super long and false lash-like. You're gonna need a lash curler. I'm using my MAC Lash Curler. Now press, 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 press. Do like pulses with the lash curler. And then tilt the head back too to really lift them. Lash primer. I'm using my Sephora Lash Craft Lash Primer. I'm gonna really get in there. I'm telling you, lash primer makes all of the difference. That one. This Sephora one is $12. And then during the Sephora sale, the Sephora collection is 30% off. So then I like to let the lash primer dry a little bit before going in with the mascara. So I think I'm gonna do my lip combo now. I'm gonna line my lips with Anastasia Deep Taupe. And taking my Benetint Lip Slash Cheek Stain. I've been loving this as a cheek stain and on the lips. A little layer. Now you don't wanna blend it out right away because I find it stays more pigmented if you let it set for just a second. Not too long because then you won't be able to blend it out. And once it is there, I spread it out with my finger. And I'll do another layer if I have to. I have to be careful with this though, because there's been times where it has traveled into my Invisalign and like left a pinky stain on it. I'm gonna use the Patrick Ta Full Syringe Lip Gloss. It has that same see-through red finish to it. I just think it looks so pretty. For mascara, I have been loving the YSL Lash Clash mascaras. They give volume, length, separation, and no clumping. They hold a curl and they don't flake. What I've been loving to do is extra, you don't have to do this, but I like to go in with a black mascara on the top lashes, and then I'll take the brown mascara for the bottom lashes. It's the most gorgeous, rich, warm brown color. Any brown mascara will work, but I truly love the undertone of this one. Starting off with the black, Try to keep my head straight and go straight up with the mascara to give the most dramatic effect. Take the tip to fan out the inner lashes. And to really get these inner lashes long, I come in with a mascara like this. Same thing, I just blink and I just go straight up. Now going in with the brown mascara, I'm gonna fan out the outer lashes. Mainly only focusing it on the ends. Pull the lashes super lightly one more time once they're dry. And this is the completed makeup look. 
This is one of my favorites. I feel the most confident. I feel glam, but like not too over the top. Literally ideal for the spring and summer. Or if you're going on vacation, I feel like this is a good evening vacation glam. If you enjoyed this video, enjoyed learning some tips and tricks and just catching up with me, then give this video a thumbs up. It really helps your girl out. Leave a comment, interact. I'm excited to just be back in like old school YouTube setup, makeup tutorial, just chilling, catching up, taking my time talking and not feeling like I need to rush through a 30 second video. Is that marshmallow fluff in my hair? Or is it gray? Nope. Yay, it's marshmallow fluff and not a gray hair. Okay. I love you guys. I pray that you all have such a great day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Oh no, I got lit off. Oh, I'm in the line. Hopefully you can see across that. Yeah.